Hey everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we will have a look at how we can build a Blazor application and connect it to a GraphQL backend. For this, we will use our GraphQL client Strawberry Shake. Before we get started, we are running workshops throughout the year. So if you want to learn all about GraphQL in the .NET ecosystem and beyond, make sure to head over to the NST conference websites and check out the dates of our workshops. I hope to meet you there. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's get to it. So first, let's create a Blazor application. Let me pull up the terminal for that. And we just run .NET new and then Blazor wasm because we are building a Blazor WebAssembly application. And let's generate that. Okay, with that done, our application is generated. We can see there are a ton of files here now. And I would say let's run it and see if it works. .NET run. Let's grab the ID and quickly head over to our browser, put it in, run it. And you can see it's working. So we can go here to the counter, play with it. So it's a basic laser example. Okay. With this, we have verified Blazor is working. Let's clear the console and put some GraphQL in. So before we put the GraphQL in, we already have a server running in the cloud that we use in our workshops. It's built around the concept of cryptocurrencies. Let's just have a look at it. So here we have Banana Cake Pop, our GraphQL IDE. And I already created a document here where I connected to our GraphQL backend. And what we want to do first is explore the schema. A bit. So if we go to the schema reference tab here and then click on the column view, we can see that we have three root types here. And these are all the possible root types that you can have in GraphQL. So query is for read only operation. Mutation is to change something in our server. And subscription is to have real-time events. What we look at first is queries. And if we dig in here, we can see that there are a couple of fields which we can execute to fetch data. Mainly, we have these asset methods we are interested in. And fetching assets is essentially getting the info about a cryptocurrency. What we want to do is list a couple of these currencies with the assets field. And if we do an into asset, we can see we can fetch the name. We are interested in that. And we also want to display some pricing information. So here we can see there's a price field that exposes a price object where we can get the last price. That is what we want to fetch, the name and the last price, and display these cryptocurrencies in a list. Okay, let's get to it. We're going back here to VS Code. The first thing that we need to do to put some GraphQL in here is to add our GraphQL client Strawberry Shake. So to do that, we need to add a package. And we're going here to the csproj file, and you can see there are the package references. And what we're going to do is just paste in the strawberry shake blazer package. And we are using the version 13 preview 45. There might be newer versions at the time you watch this video. So go for the newest. Okay, with this, strawberry shake is registered. What we should do is a quick .NET restore so everything is in place. The next thing to do here is to register a little tool that helps us to initialize a client. So to install a CLI tool, we need to create a tool manifest. So we say .NET new tool manifest, which is basically a JSON document here where all the tools are registered that we want to use with this project. With that in place, let's install the Strawberry Shake tools. So .NET tool install Strawberry Shake tools, and we again use preview 45. Let's install that. And you can see it's now registered here with our uh, tools manifest. And now we can use it. So what we want to do is initialize our client with a certain server. 
And what this does is downloading the schema. So our IntelliSense works when we write the queries and also everything compiles again the schema. And we are sure the moment we run this application, everything will work because everything compiles. Okay, so let's do .NET GraphQL init. And uh, then we specify the GraphQL endpoint URL and the client name that we want to give this client. So let's run that. And you can see it downloads the schema here for IntelliSense and to compile our client against that. And now we can start by introducing GraphQL queries. Let's create a new document here. File get assets.graphql and write a GraphQL query. The cool thing with Visual Studio Code here is that we have full IntelliSense support. So while we write that, we just get hints what is available on the schema, just like in Banana Kickpop. I already prepared the query here, so let's just paste it in because I don't want to bore you with writing. And let's go through it quickly. So we are querying for the assets here, and we want to have the assets ordered by market capitalization. Then we have here something we call a fragment reference. So a fragment spread, actually. And you can see the fragment here defines for asset, what fields I want to have. This allows me to define data contracts for my components. These translate to C -sharp interfaces and classes. With these in place, I'm now fetching the assets and also the asset price as we want it. With this, we are basically done. Our client uh, exists now. Let's build that and integrate our client. You can see the generator is now kicking in and put some stuff in place. So with that, we can go to our pages here and let's start with the index page. Let's misuse that, pick out the things that we have in here, except the page title. And then we want to put in our GraphQL components. So what the generator actually produced here is a GraphQL client that we could use in c -sharp code, but also it generated us some Blazor components. I have now a new component that is called use get assets. Let's add that. And you can see it says this component doesn't exist. It doesn't know where it is. And that's because we didn't register the namespaces as global namespaces for our Blazor application. There's this underscore imports here. We can go there and then we could add another namespace here called uh, strawberry shake build test dot components. Before we go back, let's also register the strawberry shake namespace because there are some useful extensions in there. With that, let's get back to the index razor here. And you can see our component is now blue, so it's valid now. With these components, what is cool here is that we have a couple of states here. The first that we have here is something that we call child content. And that is the main content of this component. So if the GraphQL fetch was successfully, we can just render the data here. But we also have some other states here, like we could fetch the loading state. So whenever this component is loading data, we want to display just this loading text. here. Okay. But now we could start just writing our component code that renders HTML for our view. Before we do that, there's a special parameter here called context. And this allows us to give the result or the data context here a name. We call it result. And this allows us to address the GraphQL result in our component. So let's add a little loop here. So first we check that uh, everything is not null because the server said assets and nodes could be null. So we check that and then we just do our for each here. So we for each over the asset nodes and then we print out the asset name and the last price. And with that, we are basically done. It's not a lot of code that we had to write. It's basically defining the GraphQL query then using the component and put a little bit of render logic in. There's one thing missing here still. Essentially, we have to specify how our client connects to our backend. So let's do that. So we use the builder here. 
to register our GraphQL client with our dependency injection. So at crypto client, that's the name we gave our client in the beginning. And then we use configure HTTP client. Underneath this is using the HTTP client factory. Okay. And we're going to configure our client to have the following address here. And let me just grab that from our GraphQL IDE. So let me go over to the settings tab here, copy it, and we paste it just in here. And with that, we are good to go. Let's run that. And in the current preview, just as a heads up, there is a bug if you use .NET Watch. We are going to fix that in a couple of the next reviews. So if you use .NET Watch, it would cycle always uh, and rebuild forever. Our client application is rebuilt. I'm just refreshing that here. So counter is nothing. But if I go to home here, you can see you, for instance, saw the loading there. But then we saw our content here. That's awesome. Let me just grab and display here the developed tools to see what's happening underneath. So this is our network tab. And if I go to counter here, it just fetches an image. We are not interested in that. Let's go to fetch XHR. So we just see the data fetches. If I now go back to home, you can see data is being fetched. This is our GraphQL request that fetches data. And this is essentially the response of our GraphQL request. Okay, so if I go back and go again here, you can see another data is being fetched. So every time I'm switching between my components, data is being fetched. So this might not be uh, the ideal behavior. Maybe we want to do an initial fetch of our data and then keep that, preserve that, and only occasionally refetch the data. Strawberry Shake by default already has a store configured for Blazor here where we actually have this data. This is a reactive store. And why this matters, we will see in a bit. So we can change the strategy, how we fetch actually data with our backend. So we have another property here, which is called strategy. And this allows us to pass in the strategy. So execution strategy. And then we can pick between three. So default is network only. So every time this component is getting rendered, getting initialized, we fetch data. And then we have cache and network, which will use the local store data first. So display the content immediately, then go in the background, fetch new data, update the store, and re-render the component if there's something new to it. So this allows us to not block the user with loading indicators because the data will be immediately there, but still update some of the information that might be changed. And last but not least, we have cache first, which will look in the local store. If there is no data in the local store, it would go and fetch the data from the network. And on each consecutive component initialization or asking for this specific kind of data, it would get that from the storm. Let's try that out. So network only, we already saw. It's constantly fetching new data. Let's try cache first. Changing the strategy here. Let's rerun our application. Let's go over to our website. And there, we just do a refresh. And you can see there's the GraphQL request being done. OK, now I'm going to the counter page here. And you can see that there is no new request done because the data is now being cached. Only if I do a refresh here is new data being pulled in. OK, let's change that to cache and network just to see and uh, just to get an impression here how that works. So again, we do a fetch. You can see there's a GraphQL fetch. And just let's do that again. You can see for a second a loading there. OK, now we go to counter. And now we go back to home. And you see no loading there. But in the back end, we have the data. And if you have a look quickly, you can see that there, it changed. So you can see it's displaying immediately. And then some values are changing. 
because these are the values that really changed while we were on the counter page. So that's the first cool thing with working with Strawberry Shake in Blazor. Okay, let's put some more reactiveness to that. And for this, let's keep the index page as is, but let's copy this component and uh, refine the counter page. So let's kill that and insert that. So what we want to do is actually reuse this component here and let's use cache only here. So this is cache first and maybe the other component here is also now cache first. So we are only caching when we first go on this component. And now we introduce a new concept and that is actually called subscription. Subscription are our real-time events in GraphQL. And what it allows us to do is to subscribe to some data that changes often. In this case, the asset name doesn't change often. It's fairly static. But the price, on the other hand, this changes really very often. So what we're going to do is create a new GraphQL document here, and we call that onPriceChange.GraphQL. And we define a subscription here, and I already prepared that. So instead of query, we start with the keyword subscription. And then we ask for the event on price change here, and we reuse our shape asset price. So in general, reusing fragments is not a good idea because you should tie them to your Blazor components. Each component should have a unique fragment. But in our demo, let's reuse it. And you already can see here our asset price just has the ID and the last price. But let's, for instance, also get, catch the symbol here, just as an indicator of what changes really in real time. Let's reorder that a bit. And that's also why you shouldn't reuse fragments, because now I'm bleeding some extra data now into my component which i host on index just because i want to show something on our account component so that's why you shouldn't reuse fragments but we are doing that nonetheless because it's a demo so with that done let's rebuild .NET build you can see the client is regenerated and uh, that means we can use it let's go to our counter page here and it essentially is one-to-one -one with the index page. But what we want to do is introduce a new component up here, and that is called use on price change. That is our subscription component. We could just use it like this, and it actually would update the data of our use get assets component here because we are changing the state in our store, and this component is subscribed to the store. But so that we can see what really is happening, I'm also rendering up here and just a couple of information about uh, what is being updated in real time. So let's rename the data context to result again. And then we are printing here from our result the symbol name. And let's also add the price that is being updated so last price and so it doesn't look totally crappy let's put a bit of space between these components with this we can actually run that okay it's coming up let's go to our site here we are on home let's refresh that and that works but actually our component will crash now and uh, the reason for that let's just crash it you can see it's crashed. The reason for that is subscription doesn't work over HTTP. So with version 13, we are actually introducing GraphQL uh, subscription over SSE soon. But as of now, you still have to use WebSockets. So what we're going to do is go to the program CS here and register another uh, transport protocol. So for our subscriptions, we want to use a WebSocket instead of the HTTP client. And it's almost configured the same way than our HTTP client. 
So let me just steal this UI here. And the only difference for now is to add this WSS here. So this is a web, uh, WebSocket protocol. And with that, we can just restart our application again. Okay, it's coming up. Again, let's refresh that. Okay, home is working fine. And now we can go on counter here. And you can see already the data is being updated. And you can see also this data is being updated now in real time by the subscription we are subscribed to. And that is a concept of a store. We are not having like stored data per component. If we get data from a GraphQL backend, we actually normalize the data to entities. And when we update the store, we update an entity. And each of these components is subscribed to concrete entities, meaning if one component is fetching data that affects entities from another component, this component also is being updated and re-renders. And this makes writing complex reactive applications really so easy with Strawberry Shake. Okay, with this, we are at the end. I hope you get an idea at how we can put some GraphQL in Blazor and how Strawberry Shake works. I will do a couple more deep dive episodes on Strawberry Shake that go deeper into certain aspects of it. But I hope this video gives you a good foundation to getting started. Please help our project by starring it on GitHub. And if you liked our content, hit the like and subscribe button. And with that, I'm out.